uh, again, uh, rare form of aggressive uh, periodontitis is aggressive periodontitis. Not very common, but you see such type of patients. Uh, what is aggressive periodontitis? Where in 1971 uh, has uh, defined is as a disease of the periodontium occurring in an otherwise healthy adult, so which is characterized by rapid lo loss of tabular bone. Uh, involving more than one tooth of the permanent dentition. The amount of destruction does not commensurate with the amount of local irritants. Now, many times you get such young, healthy patients who come to your clinic and they have this complaint that anterior teeth are go by. Mm -hmm. there, is a, a distal, uh, there is a distal level migration resulting into median di uh, diastema. So, these patients complain that, uh, doctor, I am having median diastema, uh, this gap in my teeth. They won't call it median diastema, there is a gap in the teeth. So these patients, you can you have to check if there is a pocket, uh, is there a pocket present in between these cent uh, these uh, uh, central incisors and first molars, because this is a disease of the pronunciation occurring in an otherwise healthy adult, which is characterized by rapid loss of alveolar bone. So these patients, if you ignore them, if you don't check them properly, within very few months. Uh, to uh, one year and all that, patient will have mobility of these teeth. So whenever you uh, find such cases, try to diagnose these cases at an early age and try to treat them. Now, in these patients, remember that the uh, there is uh, very uh, local irritants are very scanty. You will not find a plaque and cal uh, lot of plaque and calculus in these cases. But destruction will be so severe. You can see in this radiograph the destruction is so severe over here. There is hardly any presence of plaque and calculus, but destruction is. So, amount of local irritants does not commensurate with the amount of uh, uh, destruction. So, uh, these are young, healthy patients who are coming with uh, a lack of inflammation. You, if you see over here, the pocket is deep, but there is not much of inflammation. So, lack of inflammation is there. There is uh, There are deep pockets which are present. There are, there are lo less lo uh, local irritants. And you will see these uh, uh, patients. Now, uh, aggressive periodontitis is classified as localized and generalized aggressive uh, periodontitis. Okay, now localized means it is localized to central, uh, uh, localized to incisors and first molars. Localized first molar and incisor presentation is there. Now, this in localized aggressive periodontitis, as age of onset, circumpuberty, around the age of puberty, this uh, destruction starts. Generalized aggressive periodontitis, you will find uh, under the age of 30 years, but older patient also may get affected. Generalized in the, uh, peri uh, aggressive periodontitis, you will see three permanent uh, teeth um, uh, other than first molars and incisors get affected. Severity, rapid and severe loss of alveolar bone in localized and in generalized episodic in nature. Etiology of um, uh, localized aggressive that predominantly aggregated after actinomycetic comitans and generalized aggressive predominantly PGNG virus. Immunological response, robust serum antibody response to infecting agent and poor serum antibody response to infective agent in generalized aggressive. Local factors, as I told you, less. There is a familial strong association with localized aggressive and generalized aggressive and clear association. So always remember, when localized aggressive periodontitis, if you see in your clinic or in your OPD, you must call that patient's cousin, uh, patient's brother or a sister, okay, whether they also have the uh, localized aggressive periodontitis because it has a, maybe that person has in the initial stages destruction. So you can treat that patient early. So that is why there is a, you have to, uh, see to it that there is a strong association, familial strong association in localized aggressive periodontitis. Now, chronic periodontitis and localized aggressive periodontitis, this, uh, there is a uh, difference is that um, uh, chronic periodontitis is more prevalent compared to this. Okay, it is more in adults as compared to uh, younger patient, slow progression. There is air, uh, more of aerobic anaerobic as compared to this AA organism. There are uh, uh, hyper response to macrophages and abnormalities, neutrophil function in aggressive periodontitis, uh, and there are no alternatives detected immunologically in uh, chronic periodontitis. Okay, then there is uh, 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 local irritants commensurate with the amount of destruction uh, and clinical inflammation also uh, uh, commensurate with the amount of local uh, irritants. Uh, uh, factors in chronic periodontitis, but in aggressive periodontitis, that is mainly in localized aggressive periodontitis, you see lack of inflammation and less local irritants. Family aggregation is there.
Then now in localized aggressive periodontitis, uh, radiographic changes. So always when are in doubt, if you see deep pocket in the central incisors and uh, in the first molar region, ask for OPG of these patients. If you take a OPG, you may find a vertical loss of alveolar bone which starts from the second molar. In this diagram, if you see from the second premolar, it's distal of the second premolar, that is, uh, you will see the angular type of bone loss or arc shaped bone loss which goes to the basal of the second molar. So it is exactly around the first molar which starts and this is arc shaped bone loss and it is bilaterally symmetrical. So sometimes it is also called as mirror image phenomena. So, these are the arc shaped bone loss which you will see around the first molars. So, uh, these bone defects are generally wider as compared to chronic periodontitis patient. There is a burnout out phenomenon as that uh, immediately after the period of exacerbation, it goes in a period of whistles, results in, uh, into a burn out phenomenon. Now, clinically, these patients also uh, will have deep, dull, radiating pain uh, complaint with increased uh, mobility. Patients will have dental hy hy uh, can also have dental hypersensitivity due to exposed root surface. Now, in generalized aggressive periodontitis, these are the patients which come to your clinic and you really feel helpless because at, under the age of 30, this patient comes with severe bone loss associated with minimal number or to advanced bone loss affecting majority of teeth in the dentition and you have to advise extraction of these teeth sometimes because it's severe destruction has taken place at such a young age and it's very disheartening for us. But this is generalized aggressive periodontitis. Now, these are the uh, diagnosis, clinical and radiographic. You have to take a proper clinical history of these patients. Then radiographically, you must advise good uh, OPGs uh, of this patient and full mouth radiographs and all that. Then uh, uh, microbiological analysis and genetic analysis. Okay. In LAP, you will find AA. In GAP, you will find PG into that. Treatment, as you know, non-surgical therapy. No, full mouth disinfection should be done. Patient should be educated about the gen genetic inheritance and oral hygiene instructions to be given to the patient. Antimicrobial therapy, the drug of choice for localized aggressive periodontitis, systematic antibiotic uh, like tetracycline, 250 milligram, four times a day for one week should be given in conjunction with local mechanical therapy. Don't give only antibiotic. You have to do local mechanical therapy. Thorough scaling root planning has to be done and then only you can give the antibiotic. If patient cannot take tetracycline, patient, sometimes uh, patient compliance is there, okay, that time uh, you can, uh, four times a day if patient can't take, you can switch over to doxycycline 100 mg per day. Chlorhexidine rinses are given for several weeks. Tetracycline resistant at AA are also seen now and then in those cases, we have to change the antibiotic. So we can give the combination therapy of amoxicillin and metronidazole or ciprofloxacin and metronidazole can be given. Or if you can again do the cultural sensitivity, if they are not responding to these also, you can do the cultural sensitivity and antibiotic selection can be done. You can also treat patient by local drug delivery by means of gels, fibers, mouthwash into the pocket, okay, and then you can also do, uh, treat this patient with host modulation like sub antimicrobial dose of doxycycline. Now this all happened with the antimicrobial line, uh, this is non-surgical uh, therapy. Now we have to, uh, patients who have the pockets, who are uh, uh, having uh, pockets, what we saw uh, around the molar and all that, a, a deep defect and all that, you can do a flat surgery with uh, either resective or regenerative. Resect, the surgical resective therapy, you have to uh, balance the risk versus benefit and then you have to decide. But generally you can go ahead with the regenerative procedure involving bone grafting, membrane and growth factors and all that has shown good results uh, in the localized aggressive periodontitis cases. Remember, uh, now those teeth which uh, patient has come in the advanced stage, where those teeth, the anteriors, suppose they go for extraction, okay, you can extract those teeth, okay, and those uh, there you can give the removable partial denture, fixed partial denture, or dental implants placement can be done to replace this missing teeth. Dental implants have been widely used to replace missing teeth in aggressive periodontitis. So, Last one is a maintenance phase. Maintenance phase is very important. Regular recall of the patient, no longer than more, uh, no longer than three months, has to be given to the patient to check the response to our treatment. Monitoring sometimes to one. 
to three to four weeks is required when the patient is in an active uh, phase. And meticulous oral hygiene maintenance is highly recommended in these cases. Okay.